Good morning. My name is Stan. I'm a space engineer. I have the privilege of working every day with satellites. I work at Kinetic Space, a small company in Belgium, and today I'm going to tell you something about asteroids. Are asteroids really a danger to our planet? And if so, can we actually do something about it? But let's start with the beginning. Have you ever seen a shooting star? Because shooting stars if we see one, we can make a wish, or at least we believe we do. Why can we make a wish? Because they're very rare. It doesn't happen all the time, so you need to be really lucky to actually see one. And if you see one, you can make a wish and it will come true. In fact, shooting stars like you see on the, on the video are not that rare. It happens all the time. You see on the screen a video of a night in August where the Earth is passing through a dust cloud which is left behind by a comet more than a thousand years ago. This dust cloud has particles the size from the grain of sand up to the size of a small pea. Extremely small particles. But because they hit the atmosphere at a speed of 60 kilometers per second, a huge amount of energy is released and these particles burn up in the atmosphere, creating a nice shooting star. Now, if you want to see this, Take your agenda from the night of 12th to 13th of August this year. Put the mattress in the garden. I take the family and the wife and the kids and everybody on the mattress. We watch to the sky and you can see up to 60, 60 shooting stars every hour. It's an amazing spectacle. It just not, does not need to be uh, cloudy. Now, a shooting star like this from a comet is not very dangerous to the Earth because they're very small, so they burn up in the atmosphere. They do not reach the Earth. If it does reach the Earth, we talk about a meteorite. And scientists have analyzed that 99.8% of all meteorites which have been found on our planet are actually coming from the asteroid belt. Well, the asteroid belt, what is this? The asteroid belt, as you can see here, is an orbit around the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. In, in this orbit, you have millions of pieces of rock the size from a few meters up to the size of a dwarf planet. There's a dwarf planet in this, and a dwarf planet is the size of about 950 kilometers in diameter. It's a leftover from the time when our solar system was found, and these rocks orbit the sun in a very stable uh, orbit. But, as you can probably imagine, sometimes, due to the chances, there's a collision, and pieces of rock are ejected in all possible directions, including towards the Earth. And when that happens, a piece of this rock, which can be huge, not the size of a pea, but huge, um, the, the effects on the Earth can be devastating. The best example is what happened 66 million years ago. We were there, we have some video from that event. <laughs> a 10 kilometer rock, 10 kilometer wide rock, hit the Earth at 20 kilometers per second. This is about 20 times the speed of a bullet. The energy which was released in this blast is equal to one billion times Hiroshima. So it's huge. It was the extinction of 75% of all life on Earth at that time, including all species above 25 kilograms. It is believed that this event has led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Now, on satellite imagery, we recently found a crater in Yucatan, Mexico, the crater has a size of 180 kilometers wide, which is believed to be linked to this event. If this would happen today in our lifetime, this would probably mean the end of human life on this planet. How would that be? Well, Hollywood has made a lot of movies about that, so let's have a look. <laughs> this is from Deep Impact. So first of all, when the asteroid hits, you get an enormous crater which is formed, which causes massive earthquakes all over the planet. This earthquake is followed by a series of tsunamis which will wash away most cities and villages all around the world, even at very high altitudes. If you're not instantaneously killed by this, you will probably be killed by what is called global winter. Because of the impact, a lot of dust and material is ejected into the atmosphere at a very high speed and will remain there for many years. The world will be cold and uh, dark, which will probably mean that most species which cannot adapt to this new environment will, kill, will be killed as well. This is the apocalypse. It's the end of life as we know it. Now, this movie is fiction, of course. We all know that. But the threat of asteroids is actually quite real. And to show you, I give you a map. And this is a map of a US professor which has presented it to, to the US Senate, where he uh, puts a label on all the impacts 
which he has seen in a frame of about 10 years all over the Earth, from asteroids ranging from 1 meter up to 20 meters. And you can see it's happening all the time, day and night, in areas with very low population, in areas with very high population, it's happening about 30 times every year that this, the rock of this size is hitting the Earth. So it, ha it happens anywhere, anytime, any place, and most of the time we are not even warned about these rocks. Now the best example, we thank to the uh, Russian dashcam uh, enthusiastics. This is in 2013, so four years ago. This is a rock of 20 meters diameter. It hit the Earth at 30 kilometers per second. Uh, and we were very lucky because the actual rock hit at a very shallow angle, as you can see on the footage. It meant that actually the most of the energy was absorbed by the atmosphere, which caused that only uh, that actually the, the, the asteroid exploded uh, at 30 kilometers altitude, which meant that very small particles only hit the Earth. The energy which was released in this blast is about 30 times Hiroshima. We did not see this rock coming. Nobody actually predicted that this would happen. We did not know it. Now, uh, 1,200 people were injured by this blast. Not by the blast itself, but by secondary effects like the breaking of glass, things like this. Now, this happened in the Ural, in Russia, where actually very low, very low population density exists. If this would happen above a major European or American or Asian city, the effects would be devastating. Now, we know that this is happening. It's not a question of if this will happen again, and if enormous effects will be the consequence, it's a question of when this will happen again. But so far, a bit the frightening story, let's look about what we can do about it. Because we're humans, and in the last 50 years, humanity has developed all the technology required to be able to face this threat. We can do something about this. We have optical telescopes, we can f find uh, near-Earth objects in the sky, we can identify them, we can closely find what their orbit around the Sun is, we can propagate this orbit and identify whether in the next 500 years or 1,000 years an actual possibility exists that this rock might hit the Earth. We have actually also concepts on the table to be able to deflect this asteroid. We cannot move the Earth, but we can move the asteroid. How can we do that? We can hit it by a method which, or we can, we can do this by a method which is called kinetic impact. We just fly against it as hard as we can. Very simple. How do you do that? It's like shooting a grain of sand at a billiard ball. The billiard ball goes, if you shoot a grain of sand at it, even the smallest push towards the billiard ball will change its course. If you do it far away from the Earth, the asteroid will not hit the Earth, but will actually just fly by at a safe distance. We have extremely powerful rockets. I went to see one of these launches. It's amazing. If you ever have the chance to see a launch, an actual rocket launch in, with your own eyes, it's amazing. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Actually, I had it twice. So <laughs> it's <laughs> twice, <laughs> twice in a lifetime opportunity. So we have very powerful rockets. These rockets can bring satellites into space at a speed which is beyond the attraction force of the Earth. So we can actually escape Earth's gravity. We have satellites. These satellites travel far in the, into, the, into the solar system. They go to other planets. They're very sophisticated. They navigate fully autonomously. They navigate extremely accurately, and they do exactly what we think they should do. But they do only that for science. And that's exactly the point. All of this has no value if we do not try it. If we do not have a proof of concept, we need a demonstration mission such that we actually do deflect an asteroid, not one which is actually on a course to Earth, but one which is just flying around. And we actually learn from this and actually see how we will do this in the future. Building a spacecraft like this is taking three to four years. And this is really speeding it up. So we might not have that amount of time if we're actually faced with the real threat. So we need to do this now. And that's exactly what I'm going to tell you. This is happening today. Two continents the American Space Agency, NASA, and the European Space Agency, ESA, are developing a mission called AIDA. And AIDA stands for Asteroid Impact and Deflection Assessment. This mission will fly to an asteroid and perform active planetary protection. It only exists on paper, but it's becoming reality in the very near future. Now, how does this mission look like? Well, we fly to a, an asteroid called Didymos, and Didymos is actually two asteroids. Very interesting. We have a, a big one and a smaller moon. We have two spacecraft, the DART spacecraft on the right side. The DART one is the American one, and the Americans are very good at hitting something very hard, so they will just hit it. 
We are the European ones. We like to look from a distance safe. So we build another one. We build AIM. And AIM will actually arrive before DART. We will characterize the system. We will witness the actual impact. And we will actually monitor and characterize the impact uh, later on. Now, AIM and DART, we space engineers, we like to be a bit creative, still fitting the package of the, of the mission with our names. I'm very proud that I'm part of the AIM team at uh, Kinetic Space. Now, I have a short simulation on how this mission actually looks like to give you a bit of a flavor. So, again, this is a mission, uh, uh, an international mission with a NASA spacecraft called DART and an ESA spacecraft called AIM. The next thing which you will see is the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and the orbit of the asteroid around the Sun. And in 2022, both will actually perform a relatively close flyby. It's 30 times from here to the Moon further, so it's a safe flyby. But it's very interesting because the asteroid will come very close, so we can get a lot of good communication with the spacecrafts. We will be launched at the end of 2020 and we'll have to cruise for a year and a half to be able to catch up with the asteroid. At the same time, DART will also be launched in a completely other orbit because they don't want to go to it slowly, they want to hit it directly. When we arrive, we will see that it's, uh, in fact, a binary system. The binary system means we have a big asteroid of about 800 meters in diameter, and we have a smaller one, which is about 150 meters. We will start with character characterizing the complete system, knowing exactly what is the weight of these two bodies, how do they orbit around each other, and then we will focus on the moon, because it's the moon which DART will hit. It's the smaller one which we are most interested in. We have, for example, a high-resolution camera, such that we can map the surface of this moon in great detail, and then we can learn something about the outer structure of this moon. Later on, we will deploy a lander. This lander will land on the moon, and actually employ a lot of instruments to know more about the surface, temperature, magnetic, stuff like this. One of the most important instruments which we have is a low-frequency radar. This will mean it will send out radar pulses, which we will pick up by the AIM spacecraft on the other side of the asteroid, so that we can learn something about the inside of this asteroid moon. So we know the outside and we know the inside. And then there's the cool part. We have two CubeSats. And a CubeSat is about 10 on, 10 10 on 30 centimeters. It's a very small spacecraft. There are lots of universities that are building this at the moment. Uh, and they will provide another perspective on the impact. We will have three perspectives on this impact, three cameras are looking at what is actually happening. And then we're actually approaching September 2022. I will have to retreat a little bit because we are Europeans, we're a bit, we're a bit scared of DART. So DART will, by its impact, create a lot of dust and particles surrounding this moon. So we'll go a bit further away. And then DART will impact at six kilometers per second on a moon of only uh, 150 meters, 11 million kilometers away from the Earth. It sounds very easy, but in fact, it's extremely difficult. This impact will be filmed or uh, monitored by four different instruments. We have the AIM spacecraft itself, we have the lander, and we have the two CubeSats. From this mission, we will get as much information as we can on how to deflect an asteroid in the future. And that's exactly what we do. We do a demonstration mission. What is very important is to characterize the change of the orbit, because we hit it very hard, which we, and the intention to hit it very hard is that it actually changes the orbit, and therefore we go there and we witness this and we measure this as soon as, as best as we can. At the end of the mission, we come closer again, and we try to map the impact crater in as great, greatest detail as we can, and like Rosetta did, probably, we will probably end up landing on this moon as well. Now, every day, the Earth, is, the Earth is hit by asteroids. Some are very small. It's a flash of light. It's a shooting star. We make a wish. Everything comes through. But some are much bigger, and they actually can cause a lot of damage. Some are so big that they can even cause the end of human life on this planet, very similar to what has happened to the dinosaurs. It's not a question of if this will happen again. It's a question of when this will happen again. And as humanity, we have developed so much technology that we are actually capable of doing something about this threat. We have powerful rockets, we have very sophisticated spacecraft, but all of this does not mean anything if we do not try it beforehand. And as I always tell my kids, kids, do not postpone until tomorrow what you can do today. It's very important that we try this as soon as possible. Now we have the time, we have the luxury of time, so we can actually take the time to develop this and do this. 
And that's exactly what ESA and NASA are planning to do with the AIDA mission. We will, we will rehearse active planetary protection. As humanity, we have spent so much effort and time and money on the search for the origin of life on our planet. Now it's time to spend effort on the search to avoid the end of life on our planet. It's a small investment today, but with a gigantic, enormous return into the future, namely the survival of the human species. So, what do you wish for? 